Welcome to 21st Sports, and we're talking the Minnesota Vikings at the Carolina Panthers in their Week 3 matchup played September 25th, 2016. And what a game this was. Early on in the first half, it looked like it was all Carolina, although they were just up 10-8 to at halftime, but they had really controlled the first half outgaining the Vikings and really shutting down the Vikings on the defensive side as the Vikings offense really couldn't get anything going in that first half. But in the second half, the Vikings just really took over this game. And even you saw early on in the game, even in the first half, the Vikings defense, although they let up a lot of yards, their defense actually was responsible for the first points they put on the board. Speaking of which, the first points of the game were scored by Graham Gano with a 48-yard field goal that made it 3 to nothing Carolina. Then Cam Newton scored with a 3-yard touchdown run to make it 10 to nothing as the Carolina Panthers jumped out to a quick double-digit lead. But then before the end of the first quarter, Daniel Hunter making a spectacular play getting past the offensive lineman and getting to Cam Newton, sacking him in the end zone for the safety, put two points on the board for the Vikings, their first points of this game that made it 10-2 to after one quarter of play. Then in the second quarter, just about three and a half minutes before halftime, Marcus Shorrells returned a punt 54 yards for the touchdown. He Once he found that seam, there was no stopping him. And it was now a two-point game at halftime with the score 10-8. to So the Carolina Panthers, although they looked to be in control in that first half, they were only up by two points. And that's the thing is when you're outplaying a team, at least you're outgaining them by so much, and then you really don't have much to show for it. You know you're in trouble. And the Vikings, they just kept scoring, and the Panthers would not score again in the second half and in the second half in the third quarter Sam Bradford connected with Kyle Rudolph for a 15 yard touchdown the first offensive touchdown of the game for the Vikings they went for two and Jarek McKinnon scored to convert the two pointer so it was 16 to 10 as the Vikings took their first lead of the game in the third and then in the fourth quarter, Blair Walsh added a pair of field goals. He had a 28-yarder and then a 31-yarder as the Vikings would win this game 22-10. to And along the way, they sacked Cam Newton eight times and picked him off three times. So three interceptions, eight sacks for the defense, including that safety as they were really playing spectacularly, especially as the game wore on. Early on, the Panthers, you know, they were gaining yards and Cam Newton was looking good as he was making some nice passes against that secondary. But you keep throwing against these Vikings and they will make the plays. They are some ball hawks as they showed today, picking off Cam three times, making those big plays, putting the pressure on him all game long. They really got after him. Now let's actually look at the numbers. Sam Bradford, 18 for 28, 121 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions. Cam Newton, 21 for 35, 262 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. He also had seven carries for 26 yards and one rushing touchdown. And we actually look at, he was, uh, it was Curtis Artis Payne, who had 12 carries for 47 yards, who was the game's leading rusher. And for the Vikings, Jarek McKinnon had 16 carries for 45 yards. Not a lot of rushing in this game. Not a lot of offense, really. The story definitely was the defense, especially of the Vikings. But Kyle Rudolph was the leading receiver in the game with seven receptions for 70 yards for the Vikings tight end. He also had that touchdown, the only offensive touchdown for the Vikings in the game. And the leading receiver for the Panthers was also a tight end. And that was Greg Olson, six catches for 64 yards. Ted Ginn Jr. did have three catches for 62 yards. Then we look at the defense. And I'll tell you, this Minnesota defense might be the best defense in the league. At least that's the way they are playing. 
and even coming into this season, you knew they were going to have a big year as their defense has been playing at a pretty high level for the last couple years, and they have just really come together, and they're like playing at their top, at their peak. They're really hitting their prime as a defense, and this could be a very special season. Really, this game right here potentially might end up being a preview of the NFC Conference Championship. I would not be surprised if that were the case. But in this game, though, Everson Griffin with three sacks. Smith had a sack. Barr had a sack. Joseph had a sack. Robeson had a sack. And Hunter had a sack. Of course, that was for the safety. They put the first two points on the board for Minnesota. Also, Newman had an interception. Waynes had an interception. And Johnson had an interception as well. And for the Panthers, Thomas Davis had a sack. Edwards had a sack as well. And we look at the first downs. 18 for Carolina, just 13 for Minnesota. On third down, the Panthers were 6-16, just 37%. Minnesota was just 3-12, just 25%. Of course, on fourth down, the Panthers went for it twice and did not convert either as they were 0% on fourth down. Minnesota did not attempt a fourth down. And the Panthers actually had more yards in the game, 306 netted to just 211 for Minnesota. And on the ground, the Panthers had nearly twice as many rushing yards, 105 to 58 netted as both teams were struggling on the ground. Of course, the Panthers 3.8 per rushing attempt per rushing play just 2.4 yards on the ground per rushing play for Minnesota really the penalties in this game the penalties did hurt the Panthers 10 penalties for 65 yards six penalties against the Vikings for 42 yards the Vikings did have a fumble but they were able to recover their own fumble and we look at the red zone, one for one for Carolina, 100%, but they only made the one trip to the red zone. The Vikings were one for three, just 33% in the red zone. And the time of possession, 34 minutes, 52 seconds for the Panthers versus 25 minutes and eight seconds for the Vikings. So you see a lot of these numbers really favor the Panthers and really Early on, especially in that first half, that's where they put up most of their numbers, most of their yards, most of their time of possession. Really, things looked to be more in their favor, but they didn't have a lot to show for it as they only had the 10 points were only up by two. And Minnesota, they just stuck in there playing some hard-nosed football, a full 60 minutes out there on the field going 100% and that defense and the special teams coming through big time, and they were able to get the job done. They said those eight sacks, those three interceptions, they kept the pressure on Cam Newton, and they made the plays when they had to, and they come away with a huge, huge road victory against the Panthers, and they are 3-0, and and they drop the Panthers to 1-2 and as Carolina falls below 500, and this is the first loss for the Panthers at home since 2014. They had a 14 game home winning streak so it's tough to win in Carolina it's one of the tougher things to do in the last couple years in the NFL but Minnesota did it right here today and they came up big time and this is a really good sign for them moving forward 3-0 and they might have some uh, questions on offense but the way that defense is playing as we saw last year the defense was able to carry the Broncos all the way through the Super Bowl and the Vikings, the way their defense is playing, they definitely are looking like they're on the road to at least the playoffs. And they definitely have the inside edge right now after the month of September. This is the final September Sunday. So it'll be interesting to see how things shape up in the next month or two, especially in October, November, into December. But right now, they're undefeated, and they get a huge win on the road against one of the toughest teams in football. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Which plays and performances stuck out to you? Thank you very much for listening. It's greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and having a great weekend. And enjoying all the sports.